Hello everyone. Thanks for joining. Just wait for a bit so that everyone can tune in and we'll get started with the webinar. This has been a very popular topic. So thanks everyone for registering and joining us live. We will be doing a raffle so that uh, you all can have a hands-on experience. I'll just announce everything in a bit when people, we have a substantial amount of people with us. So hi everyone and welcome to our webinar, LLMs in Financial Services, Personalized Portfolio Recommendation Engines. My name is Yukti Devedi and I will be your moderator today. One of my main jobs here at Single Store is to organize weekly AI webinars. We organize two webinars per week, sometimes three. So we have a, a hands-on workshop happening tomorrow because uh, I understand that first we have had this response that uh, the webinars are a little short and they are uh, the people are not really able to follow up uh, in real time. So tomorrow for people that uh, can uh, join us live, it's a great chance to... Uh, go step by step. So there's a workshop with Akmal. That's the speaker for today. So uh, I'll announce about that in some time. So I also post about uh, these web webinars here and now. And um, any feedback is welcome. So if you feel uh, if you feel that you want some uh, updates or if you want to give me any feedback, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn to stay in loop. Uh, I'll also like to hear your ideas on topics that you would like to see in future sessions. So just feel free to drop a message to either me or Akmal. Uh, on LinkedIn. So speaking of future sessions, we have got multiple informative new webinar sessions that are coming up on uh, August 20th. That is tomorrow, as I was talking about the hands-on vector workshop, build a recommendation system using single store vector search. Pretty hot topic these days. So we decided to come up with a longer form of content. And on August 27th, this is a partner webinar with Amazon, achieve near real uh, time analytics on Amazon DynamoDB with single store. The link is there on your screen. Or you can scan the QR code if, uh, if that's more convenient. So if any of these topics are interesting to you, please RSVP right now. And I hope to see you all there. So coming back to today's topic, you're welcome to participate in the discussion throughout the session using the Zoom Q&A button, which is present at the bottom of your console. We have an internal mission statement to try to answer 100% of the audience questions, even if that means following up with folks afterwards via email. This has gotten really difficult uh, with time because we have thousands of registrations for each webinar and sometimes hundreds of questions. Just make sure uh, you have logged into Zoom with your actual name and email address because we are absolutely up to the challenge and uh, just shoot your question and uh, we'll try to address it live uh, uh, to the best of our efforts. And we'll all love you to have a dynamic experience during this webinar. So feel free to write single store notebooks. Anyone who tries it today will be entered for a chance to win either branded new AirPods Pro or Meta's new Ray-Ban LLM smart glasses. It's absolutely your choice. Simply click the link that's present on your screen. I will be putting everything in the chat as well for anyone that has joined me. Um, so just sign up. It will just take 10 seconds. And if you already have an account with us, just click on this link and you can just log in. And you may know that Single Store has had a free trial offer for many years. But in the past few weeks, we've also announced a new free share tier, which uh, Akmal will talk about a little bit later today. So allow me to announce our amazing speaker today. <laughs> if people, are, if any one of you is a regular, you might know Akmal Chaudhary. He is a very regular speaker here at our webinars and is a technical evangelist here at Single Store and has a played a very major role in solving a lot of problems faced by a lot of users. So very happy to have you here, Akmal. Uh, please. Great. Um, thank you very much, Yukti. I, I, I'm not sure if you deliberately muted yourself just there, just as you were speaking, but that's fine. Thank you very <laughs> oh, much. Oh, no, okay. okay. Oh, great. <laughs> You're still there. Thanks for that. Um, all right. And uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. And... Uh, it is, as I always do, check my clock, just uh, six minutes past six here in London. And uh, so I've got uh, even less slides to show than I normally do for this one. But before we make any progress, a important disclaimer. OK, so I'm going to be using some stock data. And as it says here, the stock data used in this webinar is entirely fictitious. It is purely for demo purposes. Please do not use this data for making any financial decisions. Very important, okay? Now, in case you're wondering, where is this stock data coming from? It's actually being generated uh, by single store. And uh, you can happily connect to this. It's just a Kafka broker, okay? And uh, I'll actually show you the, uh, uh, the pipeline for that. You are very welcome to use this, but with this important disclaimer, okay? That's entirely fictitious, okay? 
we don't have any real data to work with uh, today, but it's good enough, right? So the principle is to show you how you can do this. Um, and then subsequently, if you decide that, yep, this looks interesting, and then we could apply some of these ideas to the real world, then by all means, go ahead and do so. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's me. And as you can see, uh, very short in terms of agenda. So a little bit of an introduction just on the company and uh, the, the product. And then we'll just uh, say a little bit about fintech. And then we'll just go straight into the demos, okay? And before we progress any further, so as Yukti will share in the chat there, okay, there will be a link, uh, singlestore.com forward slash cloud trial. I think she will give you a specific uh, uh, URL for that. So super easy to sign up. <clears throat> okay, use uh, Google or Microsoft or do it the old fashioned way, first name, last name, and then just click the uh, continue button, okay? And in case you're interested in uh, attending tomorrow, where we're going to do a, a recommender system, and as Yuthi mentioned, it's gonna be two hours, okay? Uh, we are gonna try and solve, in quotes, the Netflix problem, okay? So, but you know, you could equally apply that to many other domains, many other verticals as well. So we're gonna be using uh, SVD uh, and um, alternating least squares and a whole bunch of interesting technology and all the notebooks and the, <clears throat> pardon me, all the notebooks and the material already. And we'll share that with you tomorrow, okay? If you decide to attend. So it's gonna be a bit more in depth, all right? Okay, now, uh, the other thing I just wanted to point out is that the code I'm going to be using today, it is on a GitHub repo. However, a word of caution, okay? As tends to happen, because this space, this whole area is very fast moving, stuff breaks, okay? And the important lesson there is always pin down specific versions of libraries you are using. Sometimes even that doesn't help. Uh, I found a few minor issues uh, with uh, the notebook and some of the scripts that I was using. I have updated the scripts. Uh, I'm in the process of uh, pushing these out to GitHub. So if you would like to wait a little while today, okay, or come back tomorrow, if you wish, you will get the latest version, okay? So by all means, please do check that the, the date is something beyond just a few months, okay? So this was uh, updated a little while ago and some changes need to be pushed out, okay? It's unfortunately the nature of the technology, but there we go, that's life. All right then, uh, so what we will do today, we'll look at how to manage stock tick and stock sentiment data with single story B, okay? Very straightforward and easy to do. Uh, we'll use Langchain. SQL agent with single story B, okay, as a means to be able to ask queries in natural language and it will go away and interrogate the database and uh, return results for us. And uh, again, you, you need to be a little bit careful here because although you can ask these questions in natural language and most of the time, it, you know, in the back end, it's using open AI today. Could be another LLM as well. That's fine. But we're going to use OpenAI today. Um, the important thing is that you need to ask your prompt and your questions in a very specific way. And that's important. Okay. Otherwise, it just goes off. And if you've got a huge database, it'll try asking the database and searching the entire space, and you will get errors as I found a little bit earlier today, all right? So a little bit more about that shortly. Um, we are gonna use OpenAI's open source Whisper as well, okay, for speech to text. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of code for that. So I am gonna speak some stuff to my laptop. <clears throat> it's going to, I'm gonna use a, a Whisper as the kind of uh, means to uh, accept that, it will create uh, an MP3 file, and then it will utilize that to convert that to uh, uh, a text, and then that gets sent to uh, um, OpenAI across the wire. And so the whole purpose of this is to really <clears throat> show you that you can build a, a, a nice sort of uh, chatbot, if you like. I mean, today, I, I can only show you the, the bare bones, if you like, 
the rudimentary parts of this. Uh, but you can certainly take away the ideas. And if you want to do this in anger, you want to put something like this into production, I, I seriously don't see any big limitations today. Uh, the, the cost of using these LLMs has gone down significantly. They are much better in quality. Uh, but the key thing is, again, it's designing these prompts efficiently so that you can get back the, the results that you want. And that's the main thing. I think that's where your principal effort should lie. <clears throat> okay, so uh, just a little bit about the about the company then. So we have been around since uh, 2011, previously called MemSQL. Okay, so both the product and the company were called MemSQL, focusing, as the name might imply, on in-memory OLTP, okay? Um, and uh, even some of those uh, capabilities uh, for in-memory databases. Uh, I mean, if you go back long enough, you'll see that people have been doing that actually for quite some time. Um, but this was really the focus area, fast performance for online transaction processing. Subsequently added support for column, you know, and Allen analytics, uh, some min max average count over a large scale data for OLAP. And then now today provides what's called unified uh, kind of storage for both of these, a single table type to handle both of these types of requirements. Uh, other key sort of milestones just before we move on. So vector search, vector support, everybody's got vector support today, all right? You're spoiled for choice. Um, and the thing is, Single Store has had this since 2017. And actually it was a financial customer that requested this capability of us at that time, you know, before my time, before I joined the company, but it's been there since that time. Uh, earlier this year, we announced some significant milestones and major improvements in the product in terms of vector support. And uh, some of those we'll cover tomorrow in tomorrow's workshop. But the key point here is that it's mature, it's battle tested. It is not something we just added because everybody else is doing it, but we have had this capability for some time. Uh, last but not least, we have reached a couple of milestones. So we are now a 100 million US dollar AR plus ARR company, annual recurring revenue, and over 350 global customers. And down at the bottom there, you can see a list of uh, some of the investors there. And actually some of these investors actually started off as customers and then became investors. So it's like the, the story that I often tell. It's the gentleman that, you know who bought the shaver he liked the shaver so much that he went and bought the company that made the shaver. So uh, we're kind of in that situation. All right, then. Uh, so architecturally, and this is kind of a nice high-level overview of the product. So as I mentioned, this concept of universal storage, the ability to do both OLTP and OLAP. Uh, not too many companies doing that, uh, actually. And there are some you know, research projects. Uh, I think a few... Commercial organizations have announced this, but we've yet to see them deliver on that. Well, Single Store has done this already. Uh, fast ingest, okay, so we've done events focusing on Kafka previously. Uh, we've demonstrated Spark in terms of transformations. We have an awesome Spark connector and then external sources. So if you want to read from S3, Hadoop, HTFS, for example, and this concept of pipelines, okay, which is what the animation there is showing, reading in that data at speed, at scale. You'll see pipelines today when I, I'm ingesting from that Kafka feed, uh, taking that stock data, tick data, and uh, putting it into a table. Uh, we do run on the three major cloud platforms. And my apologies, uh, this was showing fine a little bit earlier on. For some reason, uh, Google Cloud seems to have gone there. But anyway, um, AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, and we can also run uh, on-prem as well. There's a Docker container too. Uh, but seriously, the best way and the easiest way to get started is to uh, look at the chat, the link that you have shared, create an account. It's all web-based, all online, and nothing to install locally, which really saves you a lot of time and trouble. Okay, so it is a multi-model database system, okay? So at its heart, based on relational technology, but we do other stuff, geospatial. We'll look at a bit of time series today as part of the uh, the demo. Uh, there's the Lucene full text search engine built in. There's even a customer using it for key value. Uh, 
I mean, how's that for uh, a multimodal? Uh, JSON support has been there for quite some time. It's got even better with the announcement of single store Kai, which is the MongoDB compatibility that we provide. And of course, vectors, uh, last but not least, which has been there for quite some time. And then finally, just to wrap up, real-time decisions, AI apps, dynamic experiences. Uh, and again, apologies for why these icons, these were showing fine a little bit earlier, but I'm not sure what's happening there, but uh, there we go. So building dashboards, very easy to do. So whatever is your favorite technology, uh, whether it's Tableau, for example, or something else. Uh, and again, if you're a regular, you know that I, I mentioned that I use Metabase, the open source version. It's just the jar file. You, all you need is Java. And within a couple of minutes, you're up and running, connected to single store, and you can be creating pie charts and uh, and graphs and things. Uh, equally, we have the built-in Jupyter environment, which I'm going to be using today. And if you're familiar with Matplotlib, Seaborn, uh, Plotly, Plotly Go, Plotly Express, any of these uh, packages that you can create visualizations. And actually, we'll look at a candlestick chart today, uh, and uh, that's using uh, Plotly, I think. Okay, so uh, some of the ways that you can interact with uh, single store, particularly if you're doing things like machine learning or AI, uh, I mentioned Apache Spark already. And by the way, this is not an exhaustive list, okay? Just some examples. Uh, we're going to very much use uh, single stores, Python client and uh, uh, libraries today. Tomorrow, we'll focus much more on the ML stuff. Uh, we really are not doing an awful lot with uh, vector functions today. It's all hidden behind the scenes. Langchain framework takes care of that for us. And one of the things that I've done for you is that I've created some um, large quantity of sentiment data based on something that's publicly available. And I have encoded that for you. So I've taken these uh, kind of uh, uh, strings of text, which convey some meaning in terms of uh, particular companies, particular stocks and shares. And I've used something called VEDA, Valence Aware Dictionary and Sentiment Reasoner. Okay, so that's written in Rust originally. And what I did was uh, take that and built a web assembly module, okay? And uploaded that into single store. And by the way, this is some, this is a mechanism that you could use. So if the database system doesn't support some, something that you would like it to support, write it yourself, okay? C, C++, Rust, package it up as a web assembly module, load it into the database system. It will uh, run that for you, treat that as a UDF, and now you can, in theory, you could extend the capabilities of the database system ad infinitum. Uh, and last but not least, I mean, we, we do work with uh, various uh, LLMs. Today, we're gonna use a little bit of OpenAI uh, for that as well. Okay, so why FinTech? Well, it's, uh, it's disrupting the status quo, as it says here. So all of us, to some degree, have uh, some uh, kind of connection with this, you know, at, at least we're aware of perhaps one or more uh, services that are available. Um, market value is enormous and growing all the time. And in terms of the global adoption rate as well, it, it's really very, very fast paced. And this is one of the verticals actually that uh, Single Store uh, originally did very well and continues to do so. We have lots of customers in this space. But equally, I mean, we do um, offer services in other verticals and other domains as well. But here you can see an example of these kind of uh, candlestick charts in the middle. Uh, we are going to do a very simple version of this. And uh, I've previously written some streamlet code as well, which can connect to single store and essentially give you much the same output as well locally if you want to build it. Uh, I think they offer it uh, in the cloud as well. Uh, and just uh, some of the... Uh, possibilities in terms of where we might do this, uh, where we might utilize is so, you know, real time data, for example, getting these fast insights, simplifying architecture and scale with high concurrency. So you recall the diagram I showed you a little while back, a couple of slides back there, the high level view of single store. So from a developer perspective, it's good for you because you have a single product that does all these things that makes your lives easier. 
from a business perspective, essentially, it will simplify the architecture for you, improve your return on investment, lower your total cost of ownership. There is no need to glue together half a dozen different products. So this kind of database sprawl problem or technology sprawl problem that often exists within organizations, single store can solve a lot of those issues for you. And there along the bottom there, you can see some organizations, some of these uh, have presented with us. So I do recall webinars with uh, Ant Money, for example. We've done these in the, in the past. And I think IEX Cloud as well have been covered too. All right. Okay. And that's essentially it. So there's the slides all done. And let's have a look at the time. Well, that's not bad. It's just gone 6.20. So let me switch over to uh, this. Okay. And typically for the... Um, once you've signed up, so you recall I kind of pointed you to this, and if you've signed up and uh, registered, then uh, normally what it'll do is take you to the home page. So you'll see something like this. Okay, now because of a little bit sort of time constraints, and there's a fair bit to get through in terms of the demos, uh, I won't walk through all the steps, but what I would say to you is that if you want to be a little bit prepared for tomorrow, for example, you decide to you want to come along, or you want a little bit of guidance in terms of... Uh, preparing that kind of compute environment uh, so that you can use these notebooks and other things, that's fine too. So all you need to do is on the left nav here, uh, you can see this thing here. Okay, just go to deployments. Okay, let me just take you there. And uh, you can, if uh, I think if you don't have an account, by default, they give you, um, it's a free tier account. Uh, there was a time when you had to create it yourself. Once you logged in, it's already automatically created for you if you create a new account. But essentially at the top here, you can see these kind of compute resources, okay, which you need to be able to run anything. So here, one option here, you can see that because I'm sharing this environment with other colleagues, there's quite a lot of stuff running here. Uh, but essentially you want this one. If you don't see anything running, the space is blank. Okay, just click on new deployment. And uh, currently, you can see that in this particular account, the starter is ghosted out because too many of my colleagues have created starter workspaces, but you should see that already available for you. And the other thing is that if that's not sufficient for your needs, then you can go for the standard, okay, which uh, gives you a lot more choice and flexibility. But it's simply a case of just picking a, um, a name. You can take the default here, for example. Uh, your choice of cloud provider, whether it's AWS, GCP, or Azure, and then you've got a bit more choice in terms of region as well. So I could find uh, something that's physically closer to me. Let's have a look. Uh, Europe West 2, for example, London, and so on. Okay, so and then just do next here. But for the starter workspace, it's a lot simpler. It's all on AWS currently, and you don't have a lot of these uh, uh, knobs, dials, and things to configure. Uh, in this particular case, you can see that the default you get with the, the size here, which is the smallest S00, is two virtual CPUs and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And you can easily modify that just through the edit button. Okay, and this will burn through 0.28 credits per hour, okay, which is tiny. Okay. All right. And so all you need to do then is to say create workspace. So this takes a little bit of time, okay, because this is dedicated for you for your requirements. So I'll just go back, okay, because I already got this running. I have something for myself. And if I scroll down a bit here, you can see here, I've got some workspaces. And on the right-hand side, there are a whole bunch of databases here. For example, a lot of my colleagues use this as well. So I should leave those alone. But uh, I've got a couple of databases created here as well that I'm using um, for this, All right? Okay. So as I said, if, uh, if you're creating a new account, you'll find as you log in within this space, a starter workspace is already available for you, as well as a database that comes with it. Uh, that's almost instantaneous, okay? And so what I'm going to do now is just go over to Data Studio here on the left-hand side, okay? There we go. And currently what I've done is I've got this uh, notebook here, and in order to get this notebook loaded, uh, all I need to do is on the 
left here, you can see this tiny little icon. Okay, this is, uh, I'll give you this. And you see here, there is a pull down. And it's got a couple of options here. New notebook, start from scratch, import from file. And that's the way to get it in to this environment. Uh, and that's a separate issue there. Okay, so import from file will just give you a wizard. And literally, you just drag it up here if you wish. Okay, and you can specify where you want it, whether it's a personal account or you want it shared with other colleagues. Don't worry about the shared aspect. Okay, you need to give permission to people before they can see it. Okay, so keep it in your personal account and that'll be fine. All right. Now, um, I've run this notebook previously, uh, but I made a copy of it as well because I'm going to try and run through this uh, as well here. Okay. So let me just start off with a, a little bit of a sort of time series data, just showing you a bit of that. So, um, but let me just go over to the SQL editor just here for a moment. Okay. And again, where is this available? Again, if we take a look here, okay, on this, let me click that again. You see that one of the options here is this thing here, open SQL editor. Okay. That's what I'm using. And within the SQL editor here, what I've done is I've created a time series database here. Okay. I've also created something called FinTech DB here as well. Okay. It's uh, two databases. Uh, I'm using the time series database here. Okay. So we specifically focused on that. And then for this, what this one, I've created a table to store the ticker data here. And that consists of the actual symbol, okay, timestamp. And then we've got open, high, low, and the closing price, and the volume of the trades. And then we've got a key here set as the uh, timestamp. And then for the sentiment data, I've got a separate table here called stock sentiment. Okay, so that contains uh, the actual headline. And then we've got... Uh, the values that have been calculated using this thing called VEDA that I mentioned earlier, okay? We've got positive, negative, neutral, okay? So it may be a combination of those, or it may be one of those. Um, we'll take a look at some data there. Uh, maybe there's a URL here as well, okay? Who is the publisher of that? Uh, again, timestamp, and then which symbol does this refer to as well? And then for the tick uh, data itself, what I've got is this concept here, it's called a pipeline, okay? So I mentioned that a little bit earlier. So this is a great way to get data in. And so it's simply pointing and saying, well, the source of this data is a Kafka feed here, okay? And then this is the public Kafka provided by single store. And we have this topic called stock ticker which is generating this fake data for us. And it's going into this uh, tick table here. Okay, that's what's happening here. And when you initially run this, okay, so you would just select this and uh, you would just click the run button. Okay, now I've already done that. Okay, so if I do this, it'll just give me an error now because it says you've already done this previously. But one of the first things you can do is to say, okay, uh, start from the earliest record that you have available. And before you actually begin the pipeline itself, so there you've just defined it. Uh, it's a bit like the empty table. I mean, it's a, it's a description, but you haven't actually ingested any data and you can test it and you can test to see, does it actually work? Uh, are we getting some data? And then I just simply said, limit one, just get me one record to show me that it works. And yes, it did work. And then I, I finally say, start the pipeline, okay? Now this has been running uh, for a while, okay? So up the top here, I just need to be sure that I select the appropriate database. Okay, just go back here, let's have a look. Time series DB, there we go. Otherwise it will give me an error. And then just let's take a look. Um, select, okay. And start from tick. Okay. So tick is the name of the pipeline. It's also the name of the table there. Okay. So we can take a look and see how many rows have we actually got so far. All right. Let's just take a look at this. 
Okay. And there. All right. So currently, it stands at this figure here. So let's see. One, two, three. One, two, three. So that's uh, uh, over 15 million. So this is, as I said, it's been running for a little, little bit of time. And so if I run this again, okay, so you can see it's 15, 229, 728. And there the number has gone up. Now it's 15, 232, 183, okay? That's a live feed or as near as live as we can make it, okay, in this particular circumstance. So the point being that new data are arriving all the time. So, but that doesn't prevent us from running these queries. We can still run these queries and it will give us a sort of a snapshot at that point in time, whatever the result was. And so finally here, if we take a look, we can run some of these uh, SQL commands, okay? So this is just the average aggregate, okay? Looking at uh, various stock symbols and it's done in the uh, order by the symbol, okay? So you can see here, we've got various single symbols here. There's uh, Apple, AAPL and it tells us what the current average price for that is. Uh, we can do some time bucketing, okay? So this is using first, last, and we're selecting this over five days, for example, and now there's not five work days worth of data, but at least it gives us something back here. Again, you can see that uh, it's got a couple of, uh, because this is kind of made up data, that's uh, the 19th, which I think is uh, today's date. And then in here, you can see something which is on the 14th as well. Uh, here's the candlestick charts. Okay, so this is just standard SQL. All right, so it shows us this. Not very interesting, but why don't we add a little bit of graphics to that? This is using plot, plotly graph objects. Okay, now it's asking me how many days do you want? I'll say five. Okay, and then it's saying what's the symbol? A A P L. It's uh, there we go. Okay, so it's uh, generated a little bit of a visualization for us so we can hover over these and see a bit in terms of the uh, movement. As I said before, it, it, it's a little bit unpredictable sometimes. You're never quite sure what you're going to get. Uh, sometimes you get quite a lot of data, sometimes not. I mean, it depends on the, uh, on the stock symbol as well, I think. Uh, we can do some smoothing. Okay, and this is kind of the smooth price. And then we can even do some, something like this, for example, as of. So this is selecting it as sort of the latest value that we have just short of midnight tonight. Uh, or is it midnight? Let's have a look. It's yeah, midnight tonight. Uh, and that's the, the, the last value that we ha currently have available for uh, this uh, symbol, Apple. Okay. Now, the sentiment data... Uh, uh, on the GitHub repo, the actual SQL script for this is quite large. It's compressed, okay? It's the values have already been generated and I've already uploaded this. There is an associated article with this. There's a link to that in the GitHub repo, okay? So the instructions are kind of there um, and you may choose not to do this, okay? Because it does take a couple of minutes to get the data in. I had to do it from outside, but we could take a look at this as an example. So here we can see the... Uh, Example headlines or so Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway turns up stake in Liberty Sirius XM. So now it, I've done the analysis for you, as I said before. So generally, this is kind of uh, uh, broken down into positive and neutral here, and there's no negative sentiment in this particular case. Um, but this is using Vader. Okay. So all I, I've done this work, hard work for you, if you like, and it's thousands and thousands of entries. And this is available from, uh, uh, I think it's Kaggle. So that's where the original data comes from. All right, so that's sentiment data loaded in for us as well. Um, and so the next thing here, here is uh, we're gonna do a little bit more. So let's take this a step further. And again, one of the issues that I found a little bit earlier today is that previously the code worked as is, but I had to add an extra line today, uh, which was this, uh, because it, <laughs> used to work, complaining something was missing. This line chain is like that. It just seems to change uh, all the time, okay? So we just install these libraries. So we're just doing line chain, line chain community, line chain open AI, and open AI. Okay, so let's just give that a sec. And you can see the, uh, the counter there in terms of the time it's taking. Get all that done. Okay, there we go. 
And then here we are going to use the OpenAI key. Uh, now in this um, environment also, we have this uh, capability to do secrets. Okay, so again, if, if I just show you this one and then switch back. So one of the things that we can do here is secrets, okay? So if you select this, you can put this information in. So there you can see I've added some uh, uh, AWS access key ID, for example, uh, and go here, hugging face. Uh, that one is unique to me. My colleague Yaroslav has already used the uh, name there earlier, so I can't actually store it under the same name. So I need to... Uh, uh, change that slightly. Okay, so we just make sure we get the correct key there. So there we go. So that's loaded. Um, and then another thing that we can do here is to say, well, okay, um, we've got sentiment data coming in. We have a, a feed of tick data, but what are other kind of financial data could we bring into this environment and maybe ask some queries of it? And so it's very easy with uh, Langchain and uh, using this uh, uh, kind of set of instructions, which is fairly common now, retrieval augmented generation. We can take uh, data from documents, for example, or other external sources, could be PDF, uh, you know, PDF documents, might be PowerPoint slides, could be Excel worksheets as a whole load. I mean, Unstructured, for example, supports lots of these different types now. Um, and one of the issues that I found, again, a little bit earlier today was a slight complaint about this. Uh, I'm not quite sure if it was simply me, but let's try it here. See if this works. If it doesn't, I may have to run that command. But what I'm doing is essentially taking uh, this document, which contains Northern Ireland fintech investment opportunities, if I can put it that way. Okay, this is a, probably the most succinct way to describe it. So this is publicly available. And what I'm going to do is just split that document up then. Okay. It tells me that I've got one document and it's uh, about 40,000 characters contained within that. And I'm just going to split this up into smaller parts here. It's going to be a little bit of overlap. Okay. So that, for example, sentences don't just end abruptly in the middle. Uh, you know, you're, you're not chopping the text up, but you are allowing a little bit of overlap there, which is useful, I think. And now we have something broken down into sort of 23 pages. Okay. So we'll use the uh, OpenAI embeddings. There we go. And then here, we'll simply use the framework to store the embeddings the kind of uh, representation of that as vectors, these chunks, if you like, and the chunks themselves, and we'll store them into single store. And it will create this table, FinTech docs for me, okay, if it doesn't exist. And I'm just taking the text and the embeddings. Now, um, a word of caution, information, uh, FYI. Uh, this is the very minimum that you need to do for Langchain at the very least, okay? However, if you consult the documentation, okay, and I'm just switched to Langchain documents here as regards single store DB, you will see that there's a lot more that you can configure. For example, uh, there are single store supports, dot product and Euclidean distance as the distance metrics. You can change whichever one you, you would prefer. You can create an index you can also combine it with full text search, okay? If you have created a full text search index. There's lots of other things that you can do to configure this to suit your needs. And in, you know, here, for example, you can see some weighting that's applied in terms of the vector, for example. That's very, very useful. Again, configure it to your needs. Here, we'll just take the default simplest possible case, and it will simply create that table, store the vectors, store the embeddings for us, and then we can take a look and see what's actually in there. So here, okay, it's partially showing me the content, okay, what the text, and, I, and again, I've trimmed it down just to, to keep things manageable and to keep it displayed within this kind of uh, environment. 
Uh, and then you can see here that this is the internal representation of that, all right? Um, by default, it will store this as a blob type. But if you configure with some of the other options that we've shown you, it actually does it in a format that's human readable straight away. And when we can get that human readable format here, okay, which will show you what the equivalent of the vector representation is. There we go. So there are the numbers, if you like, the array that represents that piece of text there. Okay. The content on the left-hand side. Um, and then I don't know anything about blockchain. So I'm going to ask the question, you know, what is the what are the best investment opportunities in blockchain? Is come back and give me some recommendations. So it's talking about a couple of companies there. And again, I'm just reading what it's giving me back. I'm making no specific recommendations as to whether these are good or bad, but it says Vox Financial Partners, for example, PwC Global Blockchain Impact Center in Belfast. Um, I've got... Uh, this uh, Rakuten blockchain lab, for example, and I think it's pulled out some uh, recommendations here based upon that. And then the final part here is that we can then just extend this capability simply by saying to the LLM, okay, you know, take this, try and answer the question in a bit more sort of meaningful way and give me a recommendation. And here is come back with global leaders such as Deloitte and PwC, currently working on the application of blockchain solutions. And so uh, now what this will do is it summarize the information based upon the question that I've asked, but that's quite helpful. For someone who doesn't understand blockchain, that could be very useful for me in terms of getting some insights and le letting the LLM essentially do the hard work for me in terms of summarizing and possibly providing some direction and opportunity in terms of uh, finance. Now, again, word of caution, um, these things tend to have a habit of, uh, uh, you know, these uh, hallucinations, as they call them. Uh, you can control those through a set of parameters, okay? So it's, uh, uh, it's worth investigating and looking at those. So you get something uh, a little bit more predictable each time you run it, rather than the LLM kind of not knowing and then just making something up, uh, which again, could cause you difficulty if you rely solely upon the answer that it provides you, all right? So again, a caveat there. Um, and then taking this a step further, again, let's uh, go back here. Okay, let's, uh, okay that's fine. I, I should have actually switched the database back there, but uh, that's fine. Uh, what I can do is, um, let's have a look. Let me just, okay, let me just leave that for a moment. Um, and one of the nice things here is that with this uh, capability, um, all right, actually, I'm just thinking I, I ought to take care of this first, right? So you, you see, I put some instructions in here. <laughs> I didn't follow my own instructions. Okay, that's fine. Um, what we can simply do is go over here. Uh, there's a reason for this, okay? Because the text contains some used syntax DB. Okay, there is some formatting within that, which may cause us a little bit of difficulty. Okay, and we can say show tables. So we should see the one that uh, Langchain created for us. Indeed, it's there. You can see down at the bottom here. And what I want to do is I'm just going to drop that, okay? Drop. Uh, docs. Okay, so we move that from there. Oops. Drop table. Okay, and we just go back to time series. And let's just have a look at the tables there as well. Okay. Oops, sorry. So I need to select the entire text. I'm trying to be a little bit too clever there. All right. Now, here's the mistake I made. Okay. So this should have been created in the other one. The one that I just dropped was from the uh, earlier 
example that I was working on. So I want to get rid of this from here as well. Okay, there we go. That's it. And if we just say show tables again, that's great. So we've just got the two tables that to a stock sentiment. So, okay, so I'll explain the problem in just a moment, okay, what, what the issue is, but that's fine. Okay. All right, so we've we've done that. So the ability to really take external sources, be able to uh, utilize the power of the LLM to take maybe some financial, uh, uh, you know, um, reporting, if you like, I'm not sure what this error is. So this will be this. Okay. And here, what I've done is using this uh, connecting to the uh, SQL database, okay, uh, using the LLM. And what I've done specifically, just so that the answers are deterministic, is set this value of temperature to zero, okay, because this is rather important. Um, and what I'm going to do is then ask questions. Uh, here's a simple one, which is hard coded. So from the tick table, which stock symbol saw the least volatility in share trading in the data set? Okay, so let's run this and it will just come back with a stock symbol. Hopefully we'll see that result. It's... Okay, apologies, it's uh, taking a bit of time. You did see that error message pop up at the top, which is uh, signifying that there is uh, some problem in the environment. Okay, so if this uh, doesn't uh, finish executing, in, in a, oh, there you go, you see there's an error. Let's take a look at what the error is, see what the problem is. I have rerun run this a uh, little bit earlier, so sorry about that. Let's take a look. Uh, you can see all the way down at the bottom. Sometimes the JWT token expires. It says there's a connection error, API connected uh, error. Okay, let's let's try that again. Okay, so let me just reconnect and then see if we can do that. I think that little error there. Let me just execute this again. Okay, let's try this again. No, no, it's not going to work. So my apologies. So let me just switch to this, okay? So this is something I ran a little bit earlier. So obviously there's something anomalous in the environment for, and I'll investigate that. Apologies for that. So essentially what we can do is like this, for example. This is the kind of result it should return. Here's the same thing. So I asked the question and it came back with this because I've given it very narrow kind of instructions. You can see I've, I've told it the table that I'm interested in. Okay. Oops, pardon me. Let's try and get my arrow. There we go. Okay. Tick table. Okay, let's fix that. Um, I'm, I'm quite specific at what I'm looking for, the stock symbol. And then what is, you know, describing it in terms of the, the level of volatility, except essentially provide me with something that is the least volatile um, in share trading in the data set. And it's come back with just the simple answer. Um, we can also ask something like this, for example. Uh, and again, you can see the, uh, and unfortunately, the uh, not sure what this is. SQL code will not work. Um, and it's not very helpful in terms of connection. Name or service not known. Background, oh, well, there you go. So it's disconnected. Well, my apologies for that. Um, but here, for example, rather than just hard coding it, we could put something in like this. For example, we can just say, you know, enter a question and it will just prompt us. Um, and so here I've asked the question, what's the best performing stock in the tick table, for example? And in this particular case, it's come back with the answer PCLN, for example. Okay. Um, now let's... Uh, Take a look, let's keep an eye on the time and see if how we're doing. So it's a couple of minutes to go. So let me minimize this for a moment. You can see there is some connectivity issues there. 
I do have something here uh, that I'm running in uh, a virtual machine. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. All right. And that should be reasonably visible to you. Uh, let's try seeing. And again, because of the connectivity issues there, it seems to be failing in terms of connecting to the server. Again, my apologies. I'll investigate that. But let's try and see if, if we can get somewhere with this. Uh, essentially, what you can do using something like Whisper, which is available from OpenAI, there's uh, like two versions uh, available. There's an open source version, which you can get from GitHub and it's just downloadable and you can utilize it. And there is the paid version that is kind of like, uh, you send the requests to uh, OpenAI directly. Um, and so here, typically something like this, I could say, let me start recording. How many records are in the tick table? Let's see if that works. Okay, thankfully that at least works. So it must be the Jupyter environment that's causing difficulty. So here you can see the value 15352969. All right, so that gives us a value there. Let's just uh, go back here. Uh, don't worry about these uh, warning messages, by the way. It's just my environment. Okay, uh, let's just try something a bit more mm, visualize. Okay, let's try this. All right, this one, a little bit in terms of, uh, and I've got a list of kind of questions here. I could try something like this, okay? See if I can read it. So, Let's see, what's the difference between the earliest and latest timestamps in the tick table? What's the difference between the earliest and latest timestamps in the tick table? Okay, so it comes back with a result. It tells me that it's that. So notice that it's actually been able to pick up my voice correctly. So it's transcribed that correctly as well. Um, and what it does, I'm using the open source version. So it's taking my voice, it hasn't been trained on it before. So I'm, I'm trying to speak as clear English as I can. Um, it creates a local sort of file and then it sends, the, it converts that to text, sends that across to OpenAI. And then that's how it's able to do its magic here. Uh, and then we've got a slightly even better version where We can actually get the thing to talk back to us in terms of the answer. Okay, so give that a sec. There we go. So you can see this is very similar to that one. So let me just try and find something a bit more meaty here. Uh, let me just move this across. Okay, I've got a bit of real estate here so I can see the actual text. Um, let's have a look here. Uh, what's the worst performing stock symbol in the tick table? Let me try that one. What's the worst performing stock in the tick table? FTR. All right, quite a simple answer there. Let's try another one. Uh, let's have a look. Let's see if I can just uh, make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so I can just squeeze this in. So my, I'm already yet, uh, maxed out in terms of... Uh, all right, let's have let's take a look at this. Uh, let's have a look. What is the structure of the tick table? The tick table has columns for symbol, TS, open, high, low, rise, and volume. Okay, let's try one more. All right. Using the symbol AAPL, what is the most positive sentiment in the stock sentiment table and the current best price for this symbol from the tick table?
The most positive sentiment for Apple in the stock sentiment table is 0.33509, and the current best price for Apple from the tick table is $116.61. Okay. One final one. Who was the first man on the moon? I don't know. All right, there you go. Exit. Okay. So let's get back to the slides. Uh, let's see if I can find the right one. Uh, that is not the right one. That's my calendar. Let's try and find the window. It's, uh, there we go. I think it's this one. Okay. So, and again, apologies for the, for the little bit of a hiccup there. Uh, I'll investigate the problem there and see what the issue is. Um, and just, uh, oh, I show. There, that's it. I think that's what I need. There we go. All right. So, just to summarize then what, it, what you've seen. So for the vector embeddings and open source whisper, very straightforward, quite easy to code up. The code is on GitHub. Okay, if you want to experiment with that and try it for yourself, could be very useful, uh, especially for people perhaps that might be visually impaired, for example, could be very useful. Uh, Vader is something that I've published previously where we've been able to create that sentiment data and then Langchain Online PDF Loader and SQL Agent, very powerful, very straightforward, easy to use. You know, we could take financial documents, get them into the database system, then be able to do some analysis on that and using the power of the LLM to, you know, give us some information from that, essentially rely upon it to do the detailed legwork and the hard work in terms of the analysis for us. Uh, not forgetting, of course, that, uh, you know, they are susceptible to hallucinations, which we need to be aware of. And then so for the question and answering, very straightforward process, get the vector embeddings, chunks that you saw, and just save those into the database system. Uh, for this particular example, we're not using any indexing, so it is using KNN, okay, uh, not ANN. And then we're just simply returning uh, the best results, the top three or top four, or whatever. Uh, we can select that, very straightforward. So. Very straightforward and easy to manage. Tick can stock sentiment data with single store. Uh, Langchain SQL agent, very powerful. The ability to ask questions in English, it will convert those to relative, you know, the appropriate SQL statements. But it is important to be quite specific, you know, what it is exactly that you want. Otherwise, it tends to go off and query everything in your database, which is not what you want. Uh, you will soon get error messages because it, it, you've exceeded the limits of, uh, you know, how many tokens can be evaluated and so on. Uh, OpenAI's Open Source Whisper, awesome. I really like it. It does a great job. Uh, English is, I think, one of the best supported languages. Other languages are supported too. Obviously, it depends where you are in the world. Uh, and you might want to try that out, test that out. The open source version is free. And you can see that, you know, with all the stuff that I've shown you, it's got the makings of a basic chatbot for questions and answers. Certainly you could ask it questions based upon the couple of tables that we stored and the information that we're uh, uh, get gleaning from that. And you could, in theory, I mean, extend and take this a lot further than I've been able to show you today. Okay, and with that, let me stop. I think we're right on time. And again, my apologies, Yukti, that, uh, if we have a couple of questions, more than happy to take those. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll we'll take them offline. So we, we have a lot of questions for you. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you for the amazing demo, Akmal. That was really interesting. So uh, you, are you able to hear? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Were you able to hear the uh, speech uh, from the uh, from the software? Did you hear the oh, robot voice? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> great. Yeah. So. We have a lot of questions and we'll try to take a few of them because we're almost sure. at the top of the hour. So um, before we announce the raffle winner for today, we have we will like to address some questions. So there's a question from yeah. Andres. Do you have an own embedding model or are you using OpenAI's embedding model? Yes, that's a great question. So thank you for that. So I am using OpenAI for everything, okay? That's creating both the embeddings and I think the, the dimensions is 1536 uh, or something. And I'm using the LLM as well from uh, OpenAI. Now, um, we do have this uh, 
feature that's coming up very soon where we are going to incorporate Olama, okay, which is uh, free and open source currently available. And uh, that capability will allow you to choose within the Jupyter environment your own, uh, if you like, uh, uh, you know, whatever uh, LLM you, you, you would prefer or whatever you want to use to create your uh, embeddings instead. So you're not forced to use it. It's just that this occasion, it's this is how it was set up previously. Uh, and I just decided to stick with that. Right. So uh, we have moving on. We have one more question from Felix. Uh, they say, would it be possible to dig into the framework that comes up stock uh, that comes up with stock sentiment analysis? Ah, yes, that's a great question. So the what I did, uh, as I mentioned, I used something called Veda, Valence Aware Dictionary and Sentiment Reasoner. So I think, Yukti, what we can do is if I, uh, as part of your follow up email, I'll send you a link to a blog article, okay, that describes that in more detail and the steps that I used uh, to actually package up the Rust code into uh, a WASM WebAssembly, load that up into single store, uh, and then actually run that code as a UDF across this sentiment data that I loaded in. Uh, and th that might be uh, th the best thing to do. I think some of it might be included, some simpler instructions might be included the, the, with the blog post that associated with the GitHub repo for today, but I'll double check, okay? In any case, we'll, we'll send the link out, okay? So that, that that additional information is available. All right, so uh, regarding the questions, rega regarding the recording, yes, it will be available. You can go to our resources page for any webinars that you're interested in, and you can check the recordings. They're all available on the resources page, and you just simply need to click on watch on demand, and it will be emailed to you. So, uh, we have more questions from. Uh, so we have a question from uh, Yogendra there asking about the tool that you use. So you uh, use a hover display text uh, thing, right? Like ah, that. Okay, what okay. is it called? All right. Thank you. Well, that, <laughs> finally, somebody asked me. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'll show you. So the the what I use for the hover is simply built into the Mac. Okay. So this thing here, for example, it's just you need to go to the appropriate settings within the uh, Mac itself. Okay. This is, I think uh, I can briefly show you. You just go here. Uh, see if I can launch that. Uh, and it's one of these things. Accessibility. Okay. So that's where you need to go. And it's one of the settings in here. Uh, and I've had that. I think it's the zoom. There you can see it. Let me try and there we go. Okay. You just configure that. And that's what gives you the, uh, the and you can set the size of the text as well. Um, in case you're interested, what do I use for the arrows and the, uh, the boxes and things? Uh, Demo Pro. Costs, uh, I think, one or two dollars in the Apple uh, App Store for the Mac, not the for the iPhone, obviously, but for the Mac. Okay, so the, like I said, one to two dollars. Awesome piece of software. It's great if you if you use it, you know, in terms of training and uh, and stuff. So since we are almost at the top of the hour, uh, we'll just take one more question. One question from yeah. Bridget. Uh, they say when we are training the model. We are not changing the base weights of the model. Neither we are. Uh, neither we have the entire model. Otherwise, it would have answered who was the first man to land on the moon. Uh, yeah. The question is that what weights are we changing? Right. Okay. So you notice that I purposefully asked that uh, um, strange question at the end: "Who was the first man on the moon?" Simply because it is not. It, it is outside the domain of what I'm trying to do here. All right. Uh, it, it is quite specific in terms of the what I'm trying to look at. So with Langchain, when I'm using Langchain, I have uh, certain tables that are available to me, the stock sentiment table, the tick table. That is the knowledge that Langchain has. It's, it, you know, that is the only thing you can access. I'm now trying to ask it a question that is not contained within that. It's beyond the scope of that. If I ask a large language model uh, what 
I mean, he will know the answer to that. Okay, he will know the answer to that question, hopefully, and get, get it correct, Neil Armstrong. Okay, um, but because here specifically the framework is focused on just two tables, possibly three. You saw me delete one earlier. Uh, and the reason I deleted that was because it's using um, um, a re an internal representation, which unfortunately causes some issues with the SQL alchemy connection. Hence the reason I stored it in a separate database, uh, but forgot to switch. Okay, <laughs> that's my bad. Uh, sorry about that. Um, other than that, uh, I'm taking mostly the standard out of the box kind of configurations. You notice that I did set temperature to zero though. So the answers are deterministic as far as possible. And it will give me the, those uh, uh, answers based upon the data that it sees rather than having to make something up. Keep in mind also that the answer may change because we are working with a live feed of data. So I may ask a question now and it will give me one answer. 10 minutes later, I may ask the same question and it might give me a different answer simply because the values uh, of the stocks, the prices, all of that may have changed in that 10 minutes. So that's uh, something important to realize as well. All right. So uh, since in the best interest of time, even I have to drop another meeting. So I'll just like to club two questions together and then we can wrap up. I'm very sorry if we are not able to take your questions live. So there's one question from Avadesh Sharma. They say that what is the USP of single store? And there is a question from Karthik C. They say that I have a payments application and I get a number of transactions around 1 to 1 1.2 lakhs of transaction per day. So for context, lakhs is something that Indians use. It's an Indian yeah, number yeah. as a, a 100,000. Yeah, yes, so it's, it's 100,000. <laughs> one and then six zeros later after yeah, that. Yeah. So for context for other people. I have graphs and daily counts and volume on my backend portal. So how does single store help? So can you integrate the answer with what is the USP of single store? And then we can wrap up with the raffle winner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so to tell me what, what what did you say there, uh, uh, Yuxi? You, 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 USP. What, what was the what was the phrase you used yes, specifically? What is the USP of single store unique selling pro? Uh, uh, unique ah, got you, got you. And, okay. Yeah. I, I need I need to talk to the younger generation more often. I think. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So let let me just wrap this up and and try and give this to you as succinctly as possible. So. In the early sort of slide deck, I, I showed some of the key sort of characteristics of single store. Uh, the fact that it is a platform now rather than just a database system. So if we go back very quickly, let me just show this, okay? And uh, I won't run through it, okay? Otherwise it takes a moment or two, but here is the unique selling point, okay? So we can integrate with a wide range of technologies, external sources of data, okay? We do a lot of different uh, capabilities in terms of multimodal, not re just relational, geospatial, time series, full text, okay? We run on the various cloud platforms. You saw me using pipelines today. Uh, Jupyter is built in here as well. Uh, it is one product that can solve a wide range of problems. You, you, get, you get move away from this kind of database sprawl problem where you're having to integrate multiple products to solve your business problem this single product. So for developers, it's great. Like I said, you need to learn one product. If you're a business person, it will save you money because now there's no need for you to pay license fees to about six different vendors for six different products. You just come and talk to single store. And that is really the, the main thing. Okay. So it is a platform. It is a database system. You saw me using Jupyter. And again, my sincere apologies for the site hiccups there. You saw the errors coming up. So obviously there's something in my environment, which I will ask engineering to investigate today, see what the problem is. But all of this material will be available to you. You can try this out for yourselves, okay? Uh, and as I said before, I will update. Uh, I need to push some changes to the GitHub repo. And uh, Yukti will post the, the link out as part of the follow-up email. We'll also include the references to Vader, uh, and how I got the sentiment data in, okay? So we can do that for you as well. And so we'll, we'll we'll include these additional resources for you. Hopefully that's answered all of the remaining questions around that. And that you 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 have a clearer idea of what is the unique selling point of uh, single store. Uh, also regarding any questions that are spe uh, specific to your product or specific to your use case, uh, you can reach, it, reach out to us at team at single store.com. And obviously our team can assist you better like that. So, in the best interest of time, very sorry that we are 11 minutes uh, over time. And I would just like to...
Come tomorrow. Come tomorrow. <laughs> Two hours. So quick tomorrow. just before announcing the raffle winner. This, uh, uh, you know, that uh, we ran a little bit over time. This happens most of the time. So we are coming up with a two hour workshop that we will be showcasing tomorrow. And Akmal is the speaker. So if you like the session today, must attend tomorrow. And that is on vectors. Uh, can you please go to the previous uh, site? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. There we go. All right. So, uh, yeah, over here and uh, just scan the QR code, it will directly take you to the landing page. And if you want to uh, get a regular update regarding the webinars, you can sign up for our auto RSVP feature and you will always get an email with the recording and the relevant assets with the uh, webinar. So stay tuned for that. And then on August 27th, we have a, a webinar with Amazon. It's called Achieve Near Real-Time Analytics on Amazon DynamoDB with Single Store. And so stay tuned for that. And I hope to see you all there. So the announcement that everyone's been waiting for, today's raffle winner goes to Charlotte Liz. She is a senior SWE at BlackRock. Congratulations and thanks for joining, ma'am and everyone. Uh, Akmal's GitHub repo will be uh, shared very soon for everyone that is requesting for that. And if that is not you, I'm talking about the raffle winner. Do not give up. We are going to announce one more AirPods winner and Meta's Ray-Ban winner by the end of the day for anyone who has tried out today's demo. Sign up at the link that's present on your screen or by or by just uh, scanning the QR code and it will take you to the landing page. Thanks, Akmal, for the amazing demo. I know so much work goes into it and uh, really appreciate it and amazing content that you have put out for us. And we really value your time and energy. Everyone that has joined, thanks for joining and have a great rest of the day, great rest of the night. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.